Hello everyone. We have already started geotechnical engineering, unit one. And the first topic we have discussed about what is soil, what is soil mechanics, what is geotechnical engineering, how we can define soil engineering. And we have also discussed about the preview of geotechnical field problems in civil engineering. So today we shall talk about soil formation. So before coming to the topic soil formation, I would like to talk about the rocks. See, the soil formation has taken place from the rock itself. And rocks are mainly classified into three parts. The first one is the igneous rock. The second is the sedimentary rocks and third is the metamorphic rocks. Sig igneous rocks, under the igneous rocks, basalt, granite, diorite, salt, limestone, sandstone, coal comes under the sedimentary and marble, slate, gneiss comes under the metamorphic rocks. As you know, though I'm not going to talk how the rock formation has taken place. But in a simple way, I would like to tell you that due to the formation of molten magna, magma, igneous uh, rock has formed. Sedimentary rocks has formed in different layers where compaction has also contributed a major role. And as far as the metamorphic rock is concerned, the, some igneous rocks and the sedimentary rocks has been converted into the metamorphic rocks due to the heat and pressure over a time period. So, whenever we talk about the minerals, minerals are the fundamental components of the rocks. It is the constituents of the rocks. So, as weathering has taken place, we shall also take how the, the transport of transportation of soil, trans, transportation of soil, we shall talk in the next lecture. But the minerals are the composition of the rocks. You see, silicate minerals, that is also called a silicon tetroxide, are the most abundant components of the rocks on the earth's crust, earth surface, about 90% of the earth crust. So measure amount on the earth is the silicate minerals in the form of a silic sil silicon tetroxide. The common non-silicate minerals, which constitute less than 10% of the earth's crust, include carbonates, oxides, sulfides, phosphates, and salts. Other include gold, silver, copper, bismuth, arsenic, lead. You know that uh, in the form of the ores, these rocks are found, gold ores, right? Coppers. So all the things, all, all these uh, the minerals are found in the, in the form of the ores. And we have already discussed about the soil. Soil is the complex mixture of minerals, organic matter, and empty space filled to varying degrees of air and water. I have already defined this, this what, what do you mean by soil? Soil is defined as uncemented un aggregates of mineral grains and decayed organic matters with liquid and gas in the void space or empty spaces of, uh, empty spaces between the solid particles. So this uh, uh, definition already we have uh, uh, talked in the last lecture. Now we see how the formation of soil takes place. You see, from the rock itself, the soil has formed by the different methods, right? So, and the rock, con rock constitutes minerals, okay? So formation of soil, Normally, soil is formed by two methods. 
One is called as physical disintegration and another is the chemical decomposition of the rock. So whenever we talk about the physical de disintegration, temperature changes it. Its temperature contributes also a major role. You know, or we should know that the different rocks have different thermal coefficient, right? Different coefficient of thermal expansions. Different rocks have diff different expansion capability. Here I would like to say, so depending upon the change in temperature, as you know, in rainy seasons, in summer season, and the winter season, the temperature varies. And these temperatures is going to influence the different types of rocks. So what happens normally? The temperature variation is there season to season, which causes expansion and contraction of these minerals occur due to temperature changes. So when the stasis induced due to the such changes are repeated many times, the particles get detached and the rocks and the swells are formed. Due to the unequal expansion and contraction of the rocks, due to the temperature change, what is going to happen? The particles are getting detached, uh, and over a period of time, this, this formation of soil takes place. So this is the first points under the physical disintegration, temperature changes. The next is the waging action of the ice. What does it mean? As you know, in hilly areas, the cracks are also going to be formed due to the seismic activities. Nature is not in our control. And what happens in the rainy season, water enters into the cracks. And it, over a period of time, or we can say in the cold season, the water becomes ice. So once it, once it is going to become ice, the volume expands, right? So what happens actually? The volume of ice formed is more than that of water. So expansion is also going to take place and rocks get broken into pieces when large stresses develop in the cracks. Why? How, how uh, the, the, uh, these uh, large stresses are going to develop? Because the volume is going to increase. Once water is going to become ice, the volume is going to increase and it will apply the stresses on the surface of the cracks. And in that case, the rock gets detached from each other. So once it detached, then the soil formation takes place. The next point we can see a spreading of root of plants. In the hilly areas, what happens? The roots of trees and shrubs goes in the, grow in the cracks and the fissures of the rocks and forces act on the rocks. So as the, the, uh, the diameter of the roots uh, increases over a period of time, or we can say, as it enters inside the rock, it also detaches the rock from each other, right? Definitely the forces are going to occur and that forces disengage the rock and soil formation takes place. So next point is abrasion. As the water, wind, and glacier move over the surface of rock, abrasion and scoring takes place. As you know, the season to season, the wind speed also varies. Water surface runoff is also there. Glaciers are, uh, glaciers are also formed. And this moves over the the rock surface. So if it is going to move over the rock, rock surface, what is going to happen? It, it, a scoring action takes place. A scoring action takes place and that results in the weather, weathering. That means the formation of soil takes place. So in, that, uh, in all the process of physical disintegration, there is no change in the chemical compositions. How? Because here you see disintegration is going to take place. The rock particles are going to detach from each other, either by the temperature changes or a spreading of roots or the waging action of the ice or by abrasion, 
right? But chemical changes are not going to take place. So you can see here, the soil formed has the properties of parent rock. Coarse grain soils such as gravel and sand are formed by the process of physical disintegration. Gravel and sands, that means what we can say, coarse grain soils are formed due to the physical disintegration. Now we shall come to the next point, chemical decomposition. When chemical decomposition or chemical weathering of rocks takes place, original rock minerals are transferred into new minerals by chemical reactions. Here, you see, the, 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 the properties of the parent rocks are going to change. Why? And how it is going to change? Because this, the reactions are going to take place. Chemical reactions are going to take place. So let us see how it is going to change the, the, the chemical reactions. You can see the hydration methods. Hydration is the incorporation of water molecules into minerals. That means in case of hydration, the water molecules that is the H2O directly reacts with the rock, right? Directly react with the rocks and weaken the stability of the minerals. As you know that the rock is formed, rock constitutes the minerals, right? Minerals are there. So that's why we see we extract the iron, gold, arsenic from the ores itself. And these minerals are in, uh, there in the form of a rock itself. So what is going to happen the, uh, when, when water react with the rocks, right? Which results in the structural as well as the chemical changes. We can see here, this can drastically weaken the stability of the mineral, make it very susceptible to other forms of chemical weathering. For example, the anhydride calcium sulfate, when it reacts with water, and you can also say that from where water comes, it may be rainy seasons, the rain falls on the rocks and the reaction takes place. So you can see in case of hydration, directly water molecules react with the minerals. Right? Or they see the anhydrides, hydration of anhydride, or the, uh, and uh, it is going to change in form of a gypsum. So next we can see the carbonation. As you know, in the atmosphere, carbon dioxide is available in the huge amount. When rain falls or in the rainy seasons, these gases combines with the water molecules and forms carbonic acid, okay? So that is also normally we used to say the acid rain. So when acid rain or the carbonic acid falls on the rocks, it reacts with the minerals and the formation of soil takes place, right? So next point we shall see oxidation. In case of oxidation, what is going to happen? Oxidation is just like a rusting of a steel, as you know, when a steel comes in contact of oxygen, rusting takes place. Similarly, in case of rocks also, when rocks is exposed with the oxygen, in that case, the minerals are detached from the rocks, right? So what it says that oxidation occurs when oxygen ions combine with minerals in rocks. Oxid oxidation results in decomposition of rocks and turns into red. It becomes red in color. Next is the solution. What do you mean by solution? Solution means, as you know, in our country, the salts are also available in the form of a rock. Lime stone is also available. So what is going to happen? When it gets mixed with the water, when the rock minerals, some of the rock minerals, mixed with, when mixed with the water, the dissolution takes place. And after the dissolution, it moves from one place to another place. And this soil formation occurs. Soil formation takes place. Next point we can see hydrolysis. Whenever we talk about the hydration and hydrolysis, hydration means the water molecules, that is the directly water, interact the minerals 
right? React with the water. Whereas in case of hydrolysis, the uh, water molecules breaks into two parts, that is the H-ion and OH-ion, and reacts with the, the minerals. And what happens? It replaces the metallic sand, calcium, sodium, iron, and potassium in rock minerals, and soils are formed, right? As you know, in our soil, if you are going to test the chemical properties, various types of minerals are available. So from where it has come? It has come from the rock itself. It has come from the, uh, come, uh, the uh, during the formation of rocks. So we can see the feldspar uh, or geothite when it reacts with the hydrogen molecule, hydrogen atom, it replaces the potassium, and this potassium is available in the soil. Similarly, when uh, this uh, geothite reacts with the uh, the uh, hydrogen atom, it uh, replaces the Iron. So all this, uh, the, 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 this is a continuous process. It, uh, it takes, it is a long phenomena. That's why normally used to say these, the millions of years have taken place in the formation of soil. Because this process continued over a period of time and it has been continuing since long back, right? So chemical decomposition of rocks results in formation of clay minerals. These clay minerals impart plastic properties to this soil. So you see, whenever you, uh, the clay minerals, you have, you, uh, you have already seen the black cotton soil or the red uh, soil, which have the plastic properties, uh, sticking, uh, sticking properties. It has been formed from the clay minerals due to the chemical decompositions. So as I told you, hydrolysis includes the split of water molecules. That means H ion and OH ions are going to react with the minerals and soil formation takes place. Whereas in case of hydration, directly the water molecules reacts with the minerals in most of the times. That's why the hydration does not always include the split of water molecules. That means directly water splitting is not there. Directly the water molecule reacts with the, the minerals and this soil formation takes place. You see, normally geotechnical engineers have to think below 50 meter from the ground surface, right? It is a, really, we are going to, going for this uh, subsurface explorations. Normally 50 meter below the ground surface. As far as the various types of foundation design is concerned. So this is all about our today topic that is the soil formation. Thank you.